Good evening, everybody. Live from Mack Arena, it is Saturday night, and uh, Purdue just defeated Jacksonville State 81-49, to again, in the Emerald Coast Classic. Once again, no Emerald, no Coast, no, sure as hell no Emerald Coast, um, but it was Star Wars night, uh, so a good time was had by all. This will be your rap video, once again, following Purdue's 81-49 to win over Jacksonville State. Apologize for the noise in the back. Uh, obviously, uh, the crew is cleaning up the arena here, so I will uh, adjust the volume of my voice accordingly when the vacuums start. A few things to talk about here for those of you who uh, saw the game and perhaps for those of you who did not. Uh, I know it's a busy day. Your mind might not have been on basketball. Uh, I don't know. Um, but this was sort of Purdue's template uh, to a certain extent, if you ask me. Uh, you know, Purdue's got good big guys. Uh, the big guys are the best players on this team, in my opinion. They are the the combination thereof, they are the strength of this team, Matt Harms and Travion Williams. You know, we talked coming into the season that this was going to be much more, this team was going to be much more like the teams that came before last year's than last year's. This was Purdue going back to getting the ball inside as their first option and playing off of that. And uh, through four games, it's been pretty sketchy. It's been pretty inconsistent. You know, Purdue hasn't done it probably as consistently as they should have been. Um... Part of that has been this team conditioning itself uh, to do it. You know, it takes a lot of emphasis. It takes a lot of conditioning as players uh, to do it. And I think the the, uh, the week of practice seems to have paid dividends because from the outset today, uh, Purdue's mandate was clear. Get the ball inside to Matt Harms. When Matt Harms wasn't in the game, get the ball inside to Travion Williams. And uh, both of those guys were really good. Uh, obviously, they combined for... I believe only 26 points. That doesn't sound like as much, uh, but I think they were the deciding factor in this game. Not that this ever was much of a game, but it might have been had it not been for them, had it not been for the impact they made uh, at the offensive end, everything that maybe came from it. I don't know. Uh, you know, it's kind of funny how when a team establishes the post, everything goes well offensively. I don't know if that was coincidence or what, but Purdue shoots the ball well. Purdue doesn't turn it over. This was Purdue's best passing game of the season, I think. Um, all of that stuff isn't necessarily directly tied to Purdue establishing the post, but I'm sure there's some correlation on some level uh, there. Um, but this was Purdue's best offensive game probably of the season. Uh, or just a, a really, really sharp performance in every phase. I thought, again, it was Purdue's best passing game of the year. I thought Purdue, you could see in Purdue's guard's eyes, the mandate being to get the ball inside, you could literally, the increased awareness was tangible. You could cut it with a knife, or in uh, tonight's parlance, a lightsaber, uh, because it was, in fact, Star Wars night. But I thought that was the biggest takeaway from this game, is that, hey, when Purdue plays to the post, Purdue can be pretty good. Um, that's what they spent the week talking about. That's what they did, and look what happened. Jacksonville State is not Marquette. It is not Texas. It is Jacksonville State. But be that as it may, this was a good example of what Purdue is capable of uh, when it plays through Matt Harms and Travion Williams, both of whom were very, very good. Um, I think you're seeing some offensive chemistry start to take shape here uh, to a certain extent. As I said before, uh, you know, this team was going to be a work in progress offensively. Lots of guys who haven't played a lot together. An entirely new focus, uh, entirely new emphasis, a, a largely new style of play. Um, I think you're starting to see it come together a little bit. That week of practice maybe had something to do with it. I don't know, but, you know, Purdue's passing, and this has not been Matt Painter's best passing game. Game. Sorry, I have a mint in my mouth. I can't be bothered to take the mint out of my mouth to do my post-game um, rap videos. I apologize. Almost choked on it. That would have made a uh, really compelling video, wouldn't it? You know, I once swallowed an Altoid on live television uh, during Golden Black Live. Uh, that was a bit of an ordeal, but... Anyway, I thought this was Purdue's best passing game of the season. I think you're starting to see these guys a little bit figure out how to play play with with each other. You know, Jahad Proctor and um, Eric Hunter combined for 10 assists and one turnover between them. What I was saying before I choked on the mint was that this hasn't been through four games Matt Painter's best passing team. Uh, he's had some extraordinary ones. Extraordinary might be overstating it ever so slightly. Um, some very, very good passing teams with some very, very good passers. Um, 
this team has not been as good in part because I don't think they have the passing skill as some past teams did, but also just that chemistry, uh, you know, has still been something that's had to come together. I thought today, tonight, they looked a lot better than they did in the first four games. Um, is that the week of practice? It can't hurt. Um, but I do think it was always going to be a work in progress for this team offensively. And uh, I think Saturday night, tonight, if you will, was a really big step in the right direction in that sense. Um, you know, a lot of people, I'm sure, watch this game, want to talk about Nogel Eastern um, making three jumpers. I think he made three jumpers on three tries. I can't remember if he missed one or not. He missed a three. Yeah, that, no, that's right. He missed a three. That was his miss. Um, but, you know, that's going to be really interesting. Uh, obviously, jump shooting has not been his strength. Uh, I think he's put a lot of time into it. I don't know. I still don't know if he necessarily looks the part as a shooter. I don't know how comfortable he necessarily looks. I know he's put a lot of time into it. I know the issue for him, whether it be um, at the foul line, shooting jumpers, whatever it might be, is just having the confidence to do it. You know, um, a big part of being a good jump shooter is being willing to do it. And, you know, how confident he is in the work he's put in or where that has brought him, uh, you know, that's a big piece of the puzzle. And tonight... He sure looked confident doing it. And, uh, you know, I don't know if that's ever going to get to the point where that's Purdue's offensive strength is him coming off ball screens and shooting that jumper. I don't know, but if he can make 40% of them or, or something like that, just just conservatively, and show people he can do it, maybe he gets guarded differently. Perhaps it gives Purdue's offense a little bit of a different element simply in how, how defenses approach them. I don't know. I know Purdue wants to get him to the rim more. They want to get him in the post more. They want to put him in some positions to score a little bit more uh, than he has in the past, simply because they need people, a lot more people chipping in than they have in the past. Um, how big of a piece of this offense, no gel Eastern shooting jump shots is going to be, I have no idea. But tonight, at least, he was very productive doing it. Again, shooting three, three mid-range jumpers, making all of them. Uh, most of them, I think, if I recall correctly, off one dribble, moving to his left, um, with his shooting with his left hand, as he always has. Um, missed a three as well. Looked very confident doing that. Came up short. Um, I know he's put in a lot of time into this. Uh, again, it's both the skill and the confidence uh, for him uh, that are the biggest pieces of, of that puzzle. The only two pieces of that puzzle, because there's nothing other than those two things that matter. Um, but we'll kind of see where things go forward. Uh, yeah, I mean, if he's transformed as a shooter suddenly, that does give Purdue a little bit of a uh, added element. Uh, but I would also remind everyone that I think it's the prudent way to handle this to appreciate everything he does more than you focus on the things he doesn't do because he is a damn good basketball player who's helped Purdue win a lot of games without making jump shots. So that doesn't change. Even if he doesn't make another jump shot the whole the rest of the year, he's an elite defender. He's a good ball mover offensively. Um, he's a physical mismatch on offense. He's an elite offensive rebounder at his position. View him that way as opposed to what he can't do because uh, what he does is pretty significant still. Um, what else we got here? Uh, I just wrote the words go time. I don't even know what that means, but I guess now would be go time for Purdue again because you get two more resume type games. Uh, in Florida, um, look at look at this handwriting that I have to make sense of after these games, and you see why I don't write out scripts for these things because they're illegible. Um, anyway, Purdue gets two more resume type marquee games in non-conference uh, in Destin, starting with VCU, who's ranked, uh, and then followed by two teams that Purdue played last year in uh, Florida State and Tennessee, one of whom Purdue should have beaten and the other one Purdue did beat. Um, three very good opponents, uh, whichever two Purdue gets. Purdue will get two more good games. Uh, we will see um, kind of where they are. Uh, obviously, Jacksonville State is what it is, but Purdue looked like a much improved team from last Saturday to this Saturday. And now they get four more practices. I know Matt Painter covets I don't use the word covets lightly, okay? I don't just throw that around, covets, in season practices. He talks about that all the time. I know he's, he's a big 
practice lover as far as coaches go. Um, he really values the ability to practice, really values the opportunity to practice in season. You've seen precedent in the past where Purdue struggled a little bit in non-conference, come out, practiced a, a bunch in a row, last year being a good example. A couple years ago, I think 2007 was a good example, um, where once they get a couple practices in, um, you know, things start to turn for them. That being said, they lost every game in the Crossroads Classic for years during finals week, which was obviously the academic part of that is, is what it is, but there's practices in there too. But Purdue does have a track record of these weeks of pra un uninterrupted practice really paying dividends for them. And they were, they were a much better team tonight, it looked like to me, than they were against Chicago State. This was kind of the opposite of the Chicago State game. Purdue blew this one open early. They got good shots. They made good shots. They got the ball inside. It was just a really good overall performance. Very different from the Chicago State game last week. Whatever happened between that game and this game, if it happens again, uh, these next four days, four or five days going into Destin, you know, Purdue will be an even better team than the one you saw tonight. So that's going to be Purdue's hope. Uh, they do need to get better because they've got a couple of really good opponents coming up because right after Destin comes Virginia. Uh, I'm not sure Virginia is anywhere near the team it's been in in the past, but still, obviously, a very good team. Um, so that's what I got. That's uh, our report. You're okay. Aww. Yeah, <laughs> you're fine. Don't worry about it. Um, so from Mackey Arena and Purdue's 81 to 49 win over Jacksonville State. This has been Brian Newbert from GoldenBlack.com. Thank you for watching. Thank you for reading. Thank you for listening. And thank you for processing our materials. However you process. However it is, you process our materials, and we'll talk to you again um, Friday night from Florida. Jealous?